You're hours into Horizon Forbidden West. You're stocked up on weapons and ammo and armor and pretty much feel like you have a handle on the game. So now I, Zoe Della Huntylight, am going to be your guide to the advanced trials and tribulations of Horizon Forbidden West. I've spent over 90 hours playing the game pre-release and have reached the level cap, so I know what I'm talking about, trust me. These advanced tips have light spoilers for the types of machines you'll encounter and valor surges, so if you don't want to know anything like that, this video is not for you, friendo. In the pinned comment below, you'll find my Horizon Forbidden West playlist, which has all the other information about the game that you'd ever want to know. Anyway, here are my 21 advanced Horizon Forbidden West tips. Remember during combat, A, B, R. Always be rolling. Aloy is quick on her feet, but not quite quick enough to avoid every attack, but rolling is speedy. What you want to do is roll towards machines when they're mid-attack, as the majority of machines like you being at a distance as all of them have powerful ranged attacks. Obviously, when their area of effect attacks start happening, you want to GTFO sharpish, but get back close whenever you can. This especially goes for any machine that lunges at you or leaps towards you, as while they're mid-air, you can roll under and behind them, and they pause for a split second, giving you time for a shot at their more valuable components, which are often on their rear where they're much less armoured. Slitherfangs aren't particularly difficult to take down, but the one thing you're going to want to get rid of as soon as possible is that damn electric rattle tail. The Slitherfang's tail throws shock orbs and sends out shock waves that'll stun Aloy, priming her for a damaging follow-up attack. Aside from it being just plain frustrating to have Aloy out of action for a couple of seconds, it also means you're more vulnerable to death as upon the shock stunning dissipating, you have to heal and roll out of the way of the Slitherfang instead of going on the offensive. So, yeah, getting rid of that tail should always be your first priority. Likewise, stalkers aren't that tricky combat-wise, but here's a quick trick to get them gone even faster. Shoot those red stalker mines they throw around as soon as they pop out, and you'll catch the stalker in the resulting blast, as more often than not it's still close to its own mines and isn't impervious to their damage. Shooting the mines creates a chain reaction, so sometimes it'll catch other machines in its wake too. Now, rock breakers are difficult and a pain in all of our collective asses. They're giant, can travel underground, and most frustrating is as they sense movement through ground vibrations, they know exactly where you are at all times, and so, even if you're a sneaky son of a bitch like me, they are the only machine in the entire game that has zero tolerance for stealth attacks, as they can sense precisely where you are. But there is a way around all these things that make rock breakers so tricky. Once you know where one is, take the long way around and approach them via rocks, whether that's outcroppings or a mountain, as they can only sense your feet through earth or sand, but not solid stone. Climbing up on a rock in the middle of the desert even works. Once you're on solid ground, throw rocks from above onto the sand below to get the rock breakers to come up from underground, as they'll target wherever the rock landed, thinking it's you. Use tear blast arrows to destroy their digging components so they can't go underground, and you'll have a much easier time of destroying them. Screw you, rock breakers. Seeing one big machine accompanied by smaller ones, especially if they're spike snouts, means that your fight is about to get a lot harder if you're not smart about it. Accompanying machines like those can and will boost the more powerful machine, increasing the damage it deals and making it more resistant to damage. Take out the smaller machines first so they don't make the bigger boy even harder to take down. You can tell when machines are boosted as they'll be covered in a swirling red mist and they'll have this icon next to them. Thanks to Mappy BC for this tip. If you're running out of breath underwater and therefore don't yet have the rebreather, this can save Aloy's life. Fast packs are 100% usable under the waves, meaning if you're collecting resources and Aloy's lungs start to struggle, you can just fast travel to dry land and all its plentiful oxygen. 
However, if you're in a sunken cavern, you have to get outside first to use the fast travel pack, as fast travel doesn't work when you're inside buildings, caves, or underground. Booting up the invisible Infiltrator Valor Surge doesn't immediately hide you from enemies when you're in the middle of combat. If it did, it would be so broken. When machines or foes are already attacking you and are therefore at amber or red alert, you need to reduce this alertness indicator to at least amber before you can take full advantage of being invisible. Otherwise, if you enter Valor Surge while you're mid-fight and not in cover, enemies will still know where you are and it takes much longer for their alertness level to diminish, even if you're invisible. Either throw a smoke bomb to confuse enemies and allow yourself time to hide, or wait till their back is turned, slide into some nearby foliage, stay still, and hope their alertness indicator subsides. Then, boot up the invisible Valor Surge and you're good to go to get silently stabbing, baby. That amber exclamation mark is new to Forbidden West and means enemies know something is attacking them, but they haven't spotted you yet. While amber, they'll search more thoroughly for where the attacks are coming from, meaning they'll walk into the red foliage you'll probably be hiding in and will switch to full red alert mode very quickly once they see you. When using a Valor Surge, you're invincible during the animation, so if you're about to be hit by an attack, trigger a Valor Surge. It'll deflect a chunk of the damage while the animation rolls, but be ready to move quickly once it ends, as you'll probably have a very angry machine very close indeed to your good self. Scout rebel camps before alerting them to your presence, as there's often a gun somewhere near the leader's tent. You can use it for massive damage, and be warned, the rebels will pick it up if you don't get to it first. Thornmarsh, at an act settlement on the coast, is the only place with yellow, legendary armour that's available to buy as soon as you get there. Finding the requisite components you need to trade for it, however, is another matter entirely, as you'll need to find the machine sites in question for yourself. While sneaking, you want to have a sharpshooter bow equipped. Now, it takes much longer to craft, notch, draw, and aim an arrow in the sharpshooter bow than in Zero Dawn. This means it's best to use the sharpshooter when you don't have any time pressure as the enemy hasn't detected you yet, because as soon as combat kicks in, you're really not going to have enough time to notch, draw, and aim arrows with the sharpshooter bow unless you're super far away. At that point, switch to a hunter bow, or if the combat is really close quarters, a warrior bow. Although, if you get up high enough, you can use a sharpshooter bow to your heart's desire as the machines won't be able to get you. Let me explain. You can Skyrim the mountains by using Aloy's climbing and jumping, basically shimmying yourself up mountainsides to get to little crow's nest perches where you can hide and pick off any machines below. Often, the AI freaks out for machines that don't have super long range attacks like claw striders and they can't reach you, Plus, with you being so high, something messes with their alertness levels and they go back to yellow super quickly. Hey, it's a bit of a cheese, but I'm not ashamed of it, and neither should you. Splitting Spike is killer against flying enemies. Do not do what I did and sleep on it. It requires less time to draw than a bow, needs less precision when aiming, has a further reach, deals a huge amount of damage, and has a chance to ground flying foes, rendering them more vulnerable to your ordinary weapons. There's one brand new late game machine that this will be super useful against, so just heed my advice, okay? Don't be afraid to make Horizon Forbidden West harder. I played it on normal mode and found it easy later into the game, and that's without doing a ton of side quests and errands and such. However, I did play an ungodly amount of Zero Dawn, so it could be my muscle memory rearing its head. You'll find yourself overleveled for the main quest quickly if you do side quests and explore, so boost the difficulty if you want the game to remain challenging. Even if you shoot helmeted to Nacth from behind, where technically their helmets are weaker as they're more like masks really, it won't count as a headshot as the armour from their mask slash helmet counts across their entire head. 
so you don't need to wait until their back is turned to you to do a headshot, as it'll take at least two to pop the helmet off at higher levels. Press circle while climbing and push against the wall to grab onto a higher ledge. You're best off seeing if Aloy stretches an arm out to indicate she can make the jump, but if she doesn't, this sometimes works, especially when climbing up mountains. Usually the circle button makes you jump backwards, but you can override that just by pushing your thumbstick forwards. Don't draw warrior bows and waste time carefully aiming like you would with a sharpshooter or hunter bow. Warrior bows work best when you fire off shots one after the other in rapid succession, as their rate of fire is far, far higher than other weapons. Use a hunter bow or a sharpshooter bow for more carefully aimed shots. Target the salvaging quests to get your hands on one of the best sets of armor in the game, and one of the few legendary sets available. Plasma is an element that's new to Forbidden West and isn't really explained in detail at any point beside the odd loading screen, so allow me. Continually build up plasma on a creature, and when the meter is full, it'll explode on the creature, dealing a hefty chunk of damage. This is one for the patient player, as it does take 30 seconds or so for the explosion to happen. However, in the intervening time, you can keep shooting it with impact arrows to make the explosion even more catastrophic, as the meter to the right of the plasma symbol will build up to indicate how big the explosion is going to be. You'll only be able to access plasma arrows about halfway through the game though, mind you. You can switch armor in the middle of a battle. Yeah, it's another bit of a cheat, but it's especially handy in boss fights if you like to play it stealthy like me and are therefore squishier than more melee focused builds. Having a hard wearing set of armor will save Aloy's life in the boss battles as you can't go into stealth mode in boss fights as you're the only one fighting the big bad whatever and they always know where you are. Trust me, I tried. It's a shame that stealthy players have to resort to full frontal violence in boss fights, but having this hack makes it more palatable. And that's 21 advanced tips you need to know for Horizon Forbidden West. Do you have any other specialised tips for the game that you think are helpful? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer as we have a new video out every single day. Now I'm going to go and cause some lovely chain reactions with explosions and make stalkers sorry they ever dared to go invisible in front of me, so I'll see you next time.